Here's a big surprise from one of our co-sponsors of Crucial Choice. Five scholarships for five lucky students valued at $10,000 US dollars each for any student who wants to enroll in one of the foundation or undergraduate programs featured in this show. Terms and conditions do apply. Send us an email at choice at crucialchoice.org and write scholarship in the subject line. Add your name, contact information, and country where you'd like to study. Hello and welcome to Crucial Choice, the only show on careers and higher education. I'm your host, Shane Phillips. While some people have jobs, other people have careers. What's the difference, you might ask? Well, there's a big difference. Careers are about what interests you, about what you're passionate about, about what your overall direction in life is. And every week, we're gonna give you a window into a different career and its higher study options. Well, I must open this episode with a big thank you to all our viewers. If you have any suggestions, you can send them to choice at crucialchoice.org and your support and ideas help us make a better show. Today's episode is about a machine that used to be the size of a large room, but it kept shrinking and getting more powerful until it could fit in the palm of your hand. It's a machine that's revolutionized the way we live, and without it, modern life just simply wouldn't be possible. Today's show is about the computer and the careers it offers us. With me are three innovative minds. Welcome to the show, Varun. Thank you. Amir. Rishikesh. Good to be here. So, Varun, why don't you tell us where were you born? How long have you been in Dubai? I was born in uh, India. About two or three months later, I came to Dubai. Since then, I've been here for around 15 and a half years. And Rishikesh, how, where were you born? I was born in Hyderabad in Andhra Pradesh, India. And Varun, what grade are you in? I'm in grade 11. And uh, what university are you planning to go to? I'm planning to go to some universities in um, the US and Canada because of the opportunities that I feel are good for me over there. University of California, Berkeley. And in Canada, I have this university called as University of Waterloo. And what do you plan on becoming? So far, I'm thinking of um, uh, being a programmer, understand the, uh, the technicalities that come with uh, making a program. Uh, and in school, we do learn a few things. Apart from that, I'm trying my level best to update myself with what's new and um, how to get there, you know, how to get to my aim. And Amir, yes. um, what do you want to do in computers? Basically, I would like to do something which no one has ever done. For example, Mark Zuckerberg, he made an application which never came before. And look, right now, everyone is using it. The same thing I would like to do, something innovative, something that will capture the public's attention. And Rishikesh, what do you want to do in computers? Cyber security, since today that is a big issue. I see there's a future in uh, cyber security and want to go towards it. And Amir, what, what are the skills that you think a programmer has to have? Well, a programmer, he should be um, interested in programming mm -hmm. because programming, it's like, people say it's a dry subject, but once you weave it in a more creative way, once you picturize it, then it becomes interesting. So in that way, you can um, easily do programming. But the first thing, you need to be a problem solver. You need to love problems. You, if you are interested in, me, in solving problems, then come, the programming is like a very good thing to do. Rishikesh, what do you think the core skills are of a programmer? Uh, the core skills uh, it's being able to solve problems, but and for somebody to become a programmer, you know, he should be able to continuously work for at least three to four hours continuously on programming. You know, without you know losing interest. Okay, what other subjects do you need to master in order to be a good programmer? Mathematics. Specifically, what field in mathematics? Trigonometry and algebra. Amir, you're very quiet as we talk about mathematics. Is yes. there a reason for that? Well, uh, trigonometry—it's like it's used in physics and chemistry, but uh, usually problem solving, then um, geometry, and um, like statistics. All this is like used in um, programming. So, Varun, have you made a program yet? 
Yeah, but quite simple programs. So uh, has anyone inspired you to become a programmer? No, but um, my life, like the circumstances I've been in have inspired me. Amir, my own computer inspires me each and every day. It, it, uh, it, it gives me problems. Like whenever I do something and it doesn't work out, I, I think like, why isn't it working? Come on, you can't, uh, you know, it's challenging me each and every time. Rishi Kesh, has anyone inspired you to be a programmer? Uh, no, actually, I think it's mostly self-motivation for me because, you know, looking at the world today and, you know, what my interests lie in. So they, that just inspires me to just keep going. Why do you want to be a programmer? Is it because you want to get rich? No, not that. I don't, I don't want to make them rich just by, you know, taking the means of computer. I want to be a programmer because I want to make my computer my weapon. Today in the world, you know, cyber security is a, is a need, okay, it's not something optional. Amir, why do you want to be a programmer? Uh, I, I am equally interested in business, but for business you need capital. And for capital, I'll have to get a job and, you know, save up money. So, Amir, what kind of job do you think you're going to get once you graduate? According um, to my degree, I'll be getting a job, job as a software engineer. I might be, I might land as an ethical hacker as well, but it's based on my degree. I'm fine. I'm fine with any uh, field as long as it's related to computers. What's an ethical hacker? Ethical hacker is like allowed hacking. Hackers, they hack illegally to get money, while we are fighting those hackers to stop you know, doing this illegal stuff. That's all. So you're hacking the hackers? Yes. And that's, that's uh, or you could be maybe hacking hostile or, or organizations which are threatening yes. security. The only difference is ethical hackers have permission to do so, whereas um, other hackers, they don't. Rishi Cash, what job will you be taking after you graduate? After I graduate, I'll be taking up, you know, a job in, uh, in a governmental association, you know, where I can, you know, try and, you know, work on getting experience. After which I'll create my own you know, a company, being, a, being an entrepreneur, I'll create my own firewall and make it a solution and sell it. So how much do you think you'll be getting in your first job? Uh, in my first job per annum, I think I'll be getting $50,000 or so. Amir? Well, from my research on the internet, I came to know that they'll be paying 100000 per year. And uh, Varun, what do you think you'll be making in your first year? I'll be making around $70,000. Varun, why do you think computer professionals are so highly paid? The thing about computer science is it, it, it's related to tech. And everyone has something or the other that's related to tech in their hand. People need someone to manufacture and understand how to make these things for them. Rishi Kesh, you, uh, I guess cybersecurity was, was one of the fastest growing fields. Yeah. So do you feel there'll be a huge demand when you graduate? Yes, I think there'll be a very huge demand since Right now, it's, it's, uh, computers are facing lots of dangers and, you know, computer engineers will be paid a lot. When there is necessity, you come up with something new. If there is something new, that means you have knowledge. So people have knowledge in making technology, you know, further, taking technology to the next step. Okay, they'll be, they will be paid high because they're coming up with new ideas. We just learned a lot about careers available in the computer industry. Coming up after the break, we're going to find out how to study for these careers and what educational programs are available in the UAE and internationally. Here's a big surprise from one of our co-sponsors of Crucial Choice. Five scholarships for five lucky students valued at 10,000 US dollars each for any student who wants to enroll in one of the foundation or undergraduate programs featured in this show. Terms and conditions do apply. Send us an email at choice at crucialchoice.org and write scholarship in the subject line. Add your name, contact information, and country where you'd like to study. Welcome back to Crucial Choice. We just heard why these three young men want to become computer professionals. Now we're going to find out what education institutions they plan on attending and how they're going to get in. Varun, um, you said you mentioned, you mentioned that you're going to go to Berkeley in the U.S. Um, now, there must be a, a, a very stringent application process for a school like that. Can you describe a little bit about what you need to do if you're considering universities in the United States of America? Well, I haven't gone into Berkeley because I haven't applied as yet, but I'm planning to apply. For applying for such a university in uh, the United States of America, 
you, one must understand that it's not only academics that people are concerned about. They must know that you're, you're a type of guy that the university wants. And so in your application, one of the main things that people must do is to reflect their personality in the best way possible. And that's what, you know, um, that's what the college has looked for. If you add on something like, like something related to the subject in your application, it's, it's wonderful and it could get you a spot in the university. And what about the SAT or ACT or this other standardized test that you need to do? It's because people come from different, um, different countries to these colleges and the colleges want to understand that the level of understanding is similar. So these standardized tests are quite important and every person who wishes to work, pursue uh, a career or uh, pursue you know, the education in the US has to, has to do these uh, standardized tests. And how did you prepare for the test? Did you, how, how many hours a day did you have to study? How long would you study for? Well, for SAT, since uh, my college application is quite penned on uh, such a standardized test, I did spend quite a lot of time, around uh, four to five hours every day. Uh, and I, I, I went to a SAT prep institute to just give me that extra help for uh, giving such a test. Amir, uh, you decided to go to school inside the UAE. Um, what are the requirements in, inside the UAE? Since I am studying in a CBSC board, all, um, all colleges are based on the mark you get in the 12th board examination, everything. So whatever mark I get, accordingly I'll be getting the colleges, the entrance to the colleges. It's simple as that. And you don't have to do SAT, ACT, IELTS, any of these? Um, those are for international uh, colleges, if you're going abroad or if you're going to India. Uh, there are specific uh, exams that will help you to you know, get into a college much more easier. So which colleges, universities have you looked at in the UAE? In the UAE, currently I had been looking up uh, at Bits Pilani and Amiti and Manipal. Um, yeah, according to my marks, I'll be choosing which one to go. Rishikesh? I would like to go to India to pursue my bachelor's and to get into you know, uh, universities like uh, NIT, NIT Suratkal, IIIT Hyderabad and um, IIIT Delhi, you will need to write the SAT subject tests you know, of physics, chemistry and maths and to get into an uh, NRI quota you, can, you should at least get a minimum of 2350 out of 2400 but you know in India there are uh, two different types of um, quotas like which are for uh, Gulf students and for non-residents of India. So the difference between them is just the fees okay, and the amount of marks uh, in the SATs that you get. The fees is like uh, if you are taking the NRI quota, you will have to pay around $4,000 per semester. But if you get into the Gulf uh, quota, you will just have to pay $700 per semester. So. It's you know a pretty good way to save money for um, for masters in US. Varun, have you thought about what the costs are going over yeah. to uh, school in the US or Canada? For for just like the tuition fee for a college like Berkeley, um, it's around nineteen thousand dollars. Amir, have you thought about the cost? Yes, uh, for bachelor science degree, normally it is sixty thousand dirhams. Uh, it is a three year course, and um, and the cost will reduce once if you get a lot of marks, like above 95 percentage in your 12th board exams. And it ranges according to colleges, what their uh, range is, how much they want you to get, and how much scholarship they are willing to give. But normally it is 60,000 dirhams. Per year? Um, for, for three years, completely, for a course, which is Bachelor Science. Quite, uh, quite more affordable than well, I really would like to thank you so much for coming on Crucial Choice and we look forward to watching your careers blossom and wish you the best of luck with your studies. Thanks so. Thank you, it's thank been you. a pleasure. Each of these three emerging computer professionals want to study in a different country. After the break, we'll give you our recommended options. Here's a big surprise from one of our co-sponsors of Crucial Choice. Five scholarships for five lucky students valued at 10,000 US dollars each for any student who wants to enroll in one of the foundation or undergraduate programs featured in this show. Terms and conditions do apply. Send us an email 
at choice at crucialchoice.org and write scholarship in the subject line. Add your name, contact information, and country where you'd like to study. Welcome back to Crucial Choice. We just heard the story of three emerging computer engineers who each want to study in a different country. Well, we are going to add another destination. We're going to take a look at the UK, the University of Sheffield, where we spoke to the academic director of the International College. I think coming to the International College ahead of studying at the university provides our students with a real step up. Um, coming to us enables students to feel settled, to know the city, to know the university, to know how to access resources um, and enables them to feel very much a part of the city and the university when they start their degree. So it kind of gives them a, a bit of a head start in terms of enabling them to feel that they are integrated and very much a part of the university from the outset. The important thing for students to recognise is that there is a particular academic style of writing in UK universities and particularly at, uh, at, in a Russell Group university where, for example, having research skills is very important because teaching in Sheffield University is research-led. Understanding the underpinning philosophy, if you like, within uh, the university is really important. We've spent a lot of time working very closely with the university to develop the programs that we have on offer. It's been a fantastic collaborative project. We've worked with 33 departments across the university to develop the curriculum such that uh, students coming to the Pathway College uh, will be studying a course of uh, modules that will prepare them really well for their undergraduate degree or their pre-master's degree. Another destination we'd like to look at is Australia. We went to the Charles Stewart University where we spoke to Dr. Jeff Gosper. Hi Shane and hi to all the students there in the, with you. Australia is a wonderful place. The weather is fantastic. The beaches are beautiful. I actually lived in England for a long time and coming back to Australia I can say it really is a lot better than living and working in the Northern Hemisphere. I worked for an American company. I worked in China. Australia is where my heart is. It's a fantastic place to be. So you now have a choice between Australia and the UK. University of Sheffield and the Charles Stewart University are both great options and both have pathway programs. Contrary to popular belief, you do not lose a year when you do a pathway program. You can get accepted directly into second year university. Well, Amir said he wants to stay here and study in the UAE at Manipal University. So let's take a first-hand look at Manipal, Dubai. Manipal University, Dubai is a branch of Manipal University, India, which is one of the largest universities providing higher education globally with more than six decades of experience and is home to some of the finest institutions like Kasturiba Medical College and Manipal Institute of Technology. Our educational philosophy is inspired by life. In tune with that, in Career Development Center, we identify the career definition and the needs of our individual students and coach them and mentor them properly to be able to attain their career aspirations. In accordance with their needs, we identify the areas where we can train them, prepare them in terms of various skills such as their behavioral skills, their personality development skills, communication skills, giving them an understanding about what is meant by a business and how to start a business and how to become successful in whatever career that they undertake. We have collaborations and partnership with a number of industries and a number of institutions, both locally as well as across the globe. In the Innovation Center, we bring the ideas of the students, academicians, combined with the expertise of the industry to create, nurture, and develop the ideas and commercialize them into businesses.
Well, that's it for this episode of Crucial Choice. I hope you enjoyed these youngsters talking about their career ambitions and how they plan on studying for them. If you have any suggestions or questions, please email us at choice at crucialchoice.org and we'll get back to you as soon as possible. Tune in next week to watch another career unfold. I'm your host, Shane Phillips, saying bye for now.